we don't want to lose the cattle here. They're a landmark, really. They're somewhere where somebody would love to come and take photographs, and we do quite regularly. I can't understand it. I don't see what it's got to do with the health and safety executive. A farmer can have whatever he likes on his, on his own land. I don't want to cause injury to people, and I don't want to cause you know, heartache to other people, but at the same time, we've got to farm, and we want to keep going, and we want to farm that land. For me, Highland cattle like these have always been part of the landscape. This is Baslow Edge in the Peak District, and I grew up in the village of Baslow just down there, and for as long as I can remember, they've been a common sight. But that's all changing. There's hundreds of pictures, thousands of pictures of them on, on Instagram and Facebook, um, and they're very, very um, aesthetically pleasing, and the area won't be the same without them. In 2018, a walker on Baslow Moor complained to the health and safety executive after he and his dog came face to face with one of these animals. Now Alex Birch has cut his stock by more than half, hoping that it might satisfy HSC concerns. But he wants to keep them up on the moor where they can graze on the heather and bracken they need. We want to be able to keep the Highland cattle up there because they thrive up there. Nothing else that we have thrives up there. The man who reported the incident to the HSE told me he didn't want to be filmed because he had had abusive messages online, but he said he felt threatened when one of the cows pushed its head and horns near his dog, which was on a lead. It was only last September, though, that a, a woman near Sheldon and near Bakewell uh, was attacked by a cow. She remained in hospital for a long time. Don't you accept there is a risk to walkers here? Absolutely, there's a risk to any, any walkers, but we're stood now in a cow shed with cows and calves and a bull. And are we at risk? Do you feel at risk? Um, we haven't got a stick. We probably should have a stick with us in case something happens. But cows are not as dangerous as people say they are. It's hard to imagine how frightening being attacked by a cow must be. Yet that was exactly what happened to the former Home Secretary, David Blunkett, while he was out walking near his home in Beely on the Chatsworth Estate. Suddenly I heard this primeval noise and the sound of uh, a very large beast coming towards me. I let go of my then dog, uh, who quite rightly took off. The cow hit me, knocked me down, fell over me. If it had fallen on me, I wouldn't be doing the interview today and broke three ribs and bruised both my ego and my face. Has what happened to you in 2009 put you off from walking in the countryside? No, it hasn't. It's made me a damn sight more careful whenever I hear cattle. Lord Blunkett is an unlikely supporter of farmer Alex Birch's plight. When you've got the Highland cattle literally right out on the moors, we're not then talking about people just walking on a, a known pathway, a, a right-to-way path. I think that there has to be a compromise because we can't have a countryside that is bereft of the normal animal life that makes this the living, breathing place that we want it to be. Peak District photographers David and Carol Platts have organised an online campaign backing Alex. I was mortified. We don't want to lose the cattle here. They're a landmark, really. They're somewhere where somebody would love to come and take photographs, and we do quite regularly. It would be a very sad day. I've watched them grow up from being knee-high little calves to where they are now, and to have them disappear from the hillside would change the environment completely. Do you think your campaign's been successful? I think it's been successful in raising public awareness. That's the key thing, and that's what we've got to remember, that... Everybody has got a right to be here. This is access land and the whole of the Peak District is a national park and that's for everybody to enjoy. But the problem with encouraging more and more people to come out here is that some of those people aren't as aware of how to act in the countryside. We're not a farm park. We're not a, um, you know, a, a tourist attraction in the sense that Alton Towers is, for example. This is a working environment and you've got to respect that. Alex is critical of the HSE's investigation 
and how there wasn't a visit to the site where this incident happened. If we'd have gone to the site, they would have seen the cattle, they would have seen the footpaths, they would have seen the land, they would have seen that the, the issues that we have up there. For its part, the health and safety executive told Inside Out there have been other attacks at the site, although people had escaped injury. Last year in Britain, nine farmers and walkers were crushed to death by cattle. We're only going walking as humans for leisure. So you, can't, you wouldn't get a cow going for leisure into the city. Um, so it's, it, it, you've got to use a bit of common sense and take it that the countryside's been here a lot longer than the city folk. Now Alex is unclear exactly what he's allowed to do. The HSE said they didn't order the removal of the cattle. Yet we've seen an email telling Alex if he didn't take the cattle off the moorland, it would be a criminal offence. Is it fair to say then that their future's in the balance? Oh, absolutely. Thanks to the mass trespass at Kinder Scout in 1932, walkers do have rights. Writer Rolly Smith thinks it's essential those rights are protected, but walkers need to respect the countryside. I understand the land where this chap's farm is, is open country. So therefore, ramblers, walkers, bird watchers, whoever, have a right to, to walk wherever they like on it. Uh, subject to obviously some common sense uh, restrictions, which I think most ramblers abide by. So is there a way for walkers and cows to live peacefully side by side? Every year, thousands of visitors come to Lime Park here in Cheshire. Hardly the best place then to keep Highland cattle, you might think, but a herd grazes on the land here without any problems. So I've come to find out why it all runs so smoothly? Well, from our experience, we found that the, the really clear signage all around the fields, um, at every entrance point to the fields, really helps. Uh, we've used social media and the website um, that we have to communicate to people where the cattle are. On one of the cows, we've even got a GPS collar, so if people want to know exactly where those cows, that herd of cows are on a, on a given area of land, we can pinpoint that. And far from causing problems, these cattle can help cut the risk of a major threat to upland areas, fire. They're eating lots of this uh, grass you can see in the background can potentially become a, a fire risk in the spring because it's all dead. Uh, and then if we get a dry spring, it can become a fire risk. And these guys will eat that during the winter time. While photographers, walkers and locals may no longer see Highland cattle around Baslow, herds can safely rub shoulders with people so you won't have to make the long trip north of the border to see an iconic British animal. <laughs>